Hi everyone, welcome to Craft Attic K. I'm Carla. And I'm Sam. And we're here for a quick video that we're going to show you some of our whips, we're going to share with you some of our haul, and we're going to share with you some of our plans and projects that we're going to be starting in the upcoming weekend. Um, and to let you know, we both survived 24 hour cross stitch challenge take four that happened this past weekend. Um, so first I want to say, you know, hi to everybody that's new to our channel. Thank you for coming to visit with us. We hope you like what you see. And for you repeat uh, subscribers that have come back, thank you for keep coming back. Um, the jingle jangle you hear is our two chihuahua dogs that are running around around our feet and keep shaking their heads. <laughs> um, just some old business. We had a giveaway. Both winners, your your um, magazines and your ORT containers have been shipped. So you should have them by now. If not, please send me a message. But you should have received them, I would think, at the, by this point. I shipped them last week. So, um, And as a reminder, on episode 6, our last video, we have a giveaway going on. We will be doing a random drawing on August 21st. So please go back and watch that video and make sure you answer our very important question. It has been very enlightening. What do you say, Samantha? It's, it's pretty funny. It is pretty funny, our important question. So if I piqued your interest, um, go back and watch our sixth episode um, and make sure you comment on that episode to be entered in our giveaway. Um, don't say giveaway. You have to be 18 years or older so that you can provide me with your mailing address. And we are giving the Silver Creek samplings past the stash of um, Through the Storm, so which is a gift that I gave to my niece for her wedding. So, and I'm passing that um, pattern off to somebody else who would like to stitch it. So, okay. Okay. I talked a lot. Yeah. Sam, you talk some. Sam segment, here we go. <laughs> okay, tell us. Uh, I volunteered last week, I think, yeah. Yeah, was, last Thursday. That was after last week's video. Uh, I put charts together all day. It was a little bit boring, but I, I went through it and it was pretty, it was, it was all right. And then I helped organize a little bit. I was supposed to volunteer later this week, I think, mm -hmm. hopefully. And um, I think by then I should have all my volunteer hours done, I think. Yeah, sure. probably. probably. But I think we can probably still find you more opportunities. Oh yeah, I would definitely volunteer again. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun? Yeah. It's good things to happen. You meet nice people, right? It is so nice. They're so nice. So tell people that are just new to us, they may not know what you're doing when you say you're volunteering. Um, I have to volunteer to get uh, 20 volunteer service hours for the NHS, which is the National Honor Society. And um, I have to do 10 hours for a project that I have to present to the main people there. So I can be an NHS student and I'm... Um, I'm helping volunteer for hospice to get my service hours, and plus it's part of the project I chose to do that they're hosting. And, and what is that? What is that that they're hosting? They're hosting the butterfly release. They release butterflies that people pay for, and they feel butterflies. They release butterflies. It's a memorial it's a for memorial those that have passed, and yeah. it's a remembrance. And actually, they're going to be doing it real close to where we live, so it'll work out really nice, and we'll both be part of that. And I get to um, help out. And you get to help out. Yep, September 8th, um, she'll be part of the team helping out to make sure little ones don't squish their butterflies. No. Um, that happens? <laughs> that sounds so wild. Sometimes they come in little envelopes, and, and, and they're, they're really cold when they come in, is my understanding, and they're in these little envelopes. And the idea is you open it up and you release the butterfly and they all go into the air and it's really, it's miraculous. If you've ever not been to one and you have the opportunity, you should go to one. Um, but sometimes little hands get a little, and sometimes butterflies get a little too cold that they don't make the trip. So there's always some backups handy. So That's um, sad. <laughs> Okay. Sorry to make it sad, but it is a memorial, and it, it is something that happens. We just try not to dwell on that, so, and make it a good experience for everybody that's there. So I also made some biscuits this week. I made two batches of biscuits, actually. Samantha made biscuits from scratch. So yeah. when I was growing up, we used to do, like, the Dinty Moore beef stew over homemade biscuits. And I we were at the store, and I happened to see that on the shelves, and I said, oh, my goodness, I haven't had that for years. 
I don't even remember if I know how to make it because, of course, I doctor her up the, with seasonings. But um, Samantha said, if you get it, I know how to make biscuits. So I said, all righty. She, she was trying to get, like, a box of biscuit mix or something off the counter. I was like, I'm no, not I'm a baker. Not, oh, no, I'll just make it my, myself because I learned how to do it in, like, middle school. Yay, home ed teachers <laughs> for teaching her how to bake. I don't bake. And she made chocolate chip cookies this week. Yeah, but it was from a bag from Walmart. But I mean, it, or, it was from Dollar General, but it's still good. It was it it still worked. It was, it was, <laughs> they're basically gone now. <laughs> like, honestly, that's what there's so, two cookies left. Um, Anything else? I don't think so. Um, So, Stitching in the Wild. Did we do any stitching in the wild this week? We didn't do stitching in the wild this week, no. but we did try something new we haven't done before. So, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you are familiar with this group. It's a Facebook group called Virtual Stitchers. Um, and I've been a member of the group, but haven't been real active. They used to use Google Hangouts and I couldn't figure out how to work that. Um, now they use Zoom. Um, it's and an app. It, it's an app for your phone. Uh, we have it on the iPad. We're going to try it on the laptop at some point. Um, but over this past weekend, when they had the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, they had this going live event on YouTube. So you can actually check it out on the YouTube channel. But I think at one point they had 15 people on the screen, yeah. all across the screen. And, and as people were talking, it highlights who's talking. They were showing their projects. They were offering suggestions. Um, we watched somebody finish a hay. Yes, Vicki well, from School Magical Stitches, the headmistress, finished her fairy tale hay. She did her last stitches. I don't think you saw it though, because you didn't. I did see it. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I, I did she fell see asleep. She's mm -hmm. about to go to bed. I stayed up through the whole thing. <laughs> no, I did see her. She finished her finished her hay, and it, I just twelve years in the making. So that was impressive. So kudos to you, Vicki, if you're watching this. <laughs> If we're on, you're going to have to have you watch this. Congratulations on a beautiful finish. Um, so, yeah, so it's a really nice group. So we decided that we were going to give it a try. Once yeah. we saw how it worked, we decided to give it a try. So we got on to the virtual stitchers um, Zoom on, was it Saturday morning? I think it was Probably. Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, we set it up in our, we were in our stitchy spots, and we... Um, got online, there was somebody there from Canada. We met uh, Linda Yu from South Korea. South Korea. Uh, there was a, a young lady from United Kingdom. Um, so it was really interesting and a lot of fun. And I mean, it was the, we had to get off because we had things to do. But And I was we gone were, the majority of the time because I was making lunch for people. She was making lunch. But um, it was really interesting and very, I don't know, it was kind of exciting. So. If you're somebody that can't get out because for whatever reason you don't have transportation, it's hard for you to get out to stitch in the wild, that's another opportunity for you to meet other stitchers in the comfort of your home. And it was, I mean, I just can't say it enough. Different. It was it was different. It was something we haven't done before. I'm really, Sammy Joe runs the, is kind of the, the admin of the group. Um, so... You know, there's some, some playful dialogue back and forth. Um, I asked when there's mostly most people on, and they said it just kind of depends on when people in America are on. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, it, it, was, it was a good experience. So I'll leave it at that. I will put a link down below in the description box. So if you're able to look in the description box and you want to become a member, um, you just go to Facebook, look up Virtual Stitchers, and you will find them, I'm sure, without any problem. Um, and Sammy Jo hosts different events. She'll post something. There's something Friday night. There, I think they're doing a Lizzie Kate. Um, if you are stitching Lizzie, share the love of Lizzie Kate. If you want to stitch your Lizzie Kate and get on with them, you certainly can. Um, and there's a couple other events going on this month that you know that's it's wide open and it's really. I mean, there's over 400 club group members and you know so I highly recommend it. It's a way to meet and talk with other stitchers and. I've been reaching out to some folks that, that I know in Arizona saying, you got to get into this group so that we can get on at coordinated time, so we can get on and stitch together even. So, okay, enough about that. So that was our virtual stitching in the wild. Yes. <laughs> um, what you're here for is to see cross stitch, correct? Yep. All right, so do you want to go whips first? We do have finishes, y'all. We have some. We got some FFOs. FFOs. <laughs> That's exciting. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so let's do whips. Go you ahead. Like, mm -hmm. You want me to go first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I apologize if I showed this last week. I don't remember how I keep track of what I'm working on for the week is I keep a, a basket beside my stitchy like spot. A little, like a little bin. Like a little bin. Yeah. So that whenever I'm done with the project for that week, you know, after we have the video, I clean that out because I showed in the video and then I as I work on things for the week I put it put it into that bin as progress so that when we do the video I just empty out my bin, bring everything over here to our table that we sit in front of ourselves so that we can show you what we've been doing. So if I showed this last week, I apologize. I don't mean to show it twice, but I'm going to show you anyway. Um, this is Hello Pumpkin. It's a mystery stitch along. So um, this is where I am. I'm still working on that box. And I did this on a hand dyed fabric by Stephanie. It's a 28 count Jobelin called Vanilla Latte. I actually started this May 15th. I am behind. Just gonna let you know. And it's a little um, wonky, but it's okay. It's it's I'm off by half a stitch. I think I did show this last week, so I won't dwell on this because I know I'm off a half a stitch and I'm working on fixing it, but I'm not gonna tear that out. So still that's late. my back. You know what? I'm not tearing it out. I will just fill in with these leaves and what have you that comes up. So it's a five month uh, mystery stitch along and I'm we've had the fox came out on the third month. So there's still two more months and I think it'll be up here on the top of the tree. So I wanted to try and get that finished and I was going to be able to move my cue snap, but um, other projects jumped in front of this one, so this one is probably not going to get worked on until the next um, clue comes out, which is, I believe, I want to say the 15th, so I think it comes out this week. Um, but you'll be too busy working on sales. I'll be working on other things, so i got to tell you. So that's where we're at with that, and I'll put that away. Um, I also have my heaven and earth design we we did the 24 hours of cross stitch we alluded to that that's jen jen lee quirks and stitches um does or has been doing 24 hours of cross stitch challenges um and this this has been her take four she's the first one her and her mom did on their own then they did a take two a take three was back in june and this is take mm. four not sure when the next one's going to come out. I'm, I'm looking for Jen's video. It might be out by the time this video gets posted to see when the next one's coming. I always get excited if it's my weekend that my husband's working because then I know I get the stitch for the yeah. weekend. We don't have to go nowhere. We don't have to go anywhere. So we really make it a full-fledged weekend. So um, we decided that this was going to be our heaven and earth design challenge. Kind of. It's kind of. So we started, we were team sleep. For the, I was team sleep for the most part. Um, I think I even fell asleep in my chair. I'm oh, yeah, she took a nap. Samantha I took a picture took a of picture. her. We are not inserting that picture. She took a nap. At all. I won't. But she uh, <laughs> she fell asleep in her sewing chair, and then her dog laid, like our chihuahua dog, laid on her and fell asleep. And then she just. So Samantha couldn't resist. Yeah, I took a picture. She's <laughs> not inserting that picture. That picture will not be going on live. Okay. I won't. I'll try not. Don't pressure her because she's not putting that picture up. She thought it was funny though. I started to So I worked <laughs> on my Heaven and Earth and it's um, Rise of the Witches. So here is where I, and I don't have a thing It's alright. I don't think you can listen can you see? Okay, so this is where I, did, I went I had a cross the top done before. And she's then starting on the diagonal. I'm trying to do the diagonal stitching. I'm converting to the diagonal. I do like the diagonal stitching a lot better. Um, it's easier to keep track of where I'm at. I didn't, didn't feel like I was wasting a lot of floss that way. Um, so if you have, if you work on a hate or you're, you're, you haven't tried the diagonal stitching, you may want to try it. I don't feel any lines. It, it's just you know, some people talk about that they can feel their checkers or they can feel page breaks, but I'm not feeling any lines on here. And, you know, the back, because everybody wants to know about your back, the back is just as clean as the front. I mean, it, it to me, it just, it worked really well and it was really easy to keep track of where I was at. I, I like it. So this is pa the first page. This one is a 19 page pattern. Um, the last, it's like, page one, page two, and then page three has got like this much. It's not a full page. 
Uh, this is on a 14 count Ada. And the reason why I did it on Ada instead of even weave is because I've never done a haid before. I picked a small pattern that looked like it was fairly simple. It is fairly simple. There's not, a, I mean, I would say there's not a lot of colors, but if you look behind me, there's two rows of colors that go rings. I use thread drops um, that go with that. So a lot of blues, teals. So yeah, I guess it's got some colors, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like two colors. Isn't so, so that was what my, I primarily worked on 1,250 stitches I did this weekend on this project. Good job. So, and that's for Full Coverage Fanatics too. So if you're in that group, that, that was part of my Full Coverage Fanatics. Um, the other whip I worked on and I worked on this on Sunday because I felt like okay I did 250 stitches on my head let me work on something else and Samantha says why don't you look work on your sewing machine and I said no I don't think so well Samantha and I created a tiny decision wheel yes and I don't know if anybody I always thought I've seen people do their little tiny decision wheels you can see I think there oh. you go you can see a tiny decision wheel. People have done this on YouTube, and I always thought I am never going to be that person that can't make their own decision. No offense, no offense to anybody out there, but I am not going to be the person that can't make their own decisions on what projects to work on. How quickly that changed. Because as I, it wasn't that I couldn't decide what I wanted to work on. It was that everything I was calling to me to work on. Mm. All of my works in progress were like, hey, I need some Come stitchy time. Hey, you haven't looked at me in a while. And so, and I was, I have a lot of whips and I was having trouble kind of keeping track of, I forgot some of the things I was working on. Sorry. <laughs> so, what I did was I made, I made four wheels. I made a whip wheel that every project that I have shown that I'm actively working on is in that wheel. Then I have a small starts, a medium starts, and a and large, large starts, starts, or a big ass project, BAP starts. Yeah, and if you remember back does. in our earlier videos, I talked about I wanted to put my patterns that I wanted to work on into mm -hmm. those categories, separate small, binders. medium, and large, and they're in separate binders. Well, Sometimes it's hard to think about what do I really want to start. Sometimes it just jumps out at you and says, hey, it's me. So, and I'm one of those people that I would be out going, buying three patterns, not really realizing I already had it. So, um, I went ahead and put my starts in there that's not kitted. They're just in there just as a start. If I'm, I'm hankering to start a small and I really don't care what I start, I just have a, want, want to start something, I might spin that wheel and just pick a start. I also did, what was my fourth wheel? Um, let me look here because I forgot. Sows, my stitch alongs. Yeah. I did make a stitch along because I have four or five sows, believe it or not, that I'm actively involved in and I work on. So I did want to make a sow <laughs> wheel. And I have a Mania 2019 wheel. It's my first year in Mania. So I put in all of my Mania projects and I put a number with each one that correlates with the day of the month that I started it. So I have some selections from my tiny decision wheel, and I hope I haven't lost anybody trying to explain this. But and it also works as like a list, so that like right. organizes her brain system. It helps right organizes my brain system. So what we decided, or what I decided to do, was I did all this work all week. I'm working on my school of magical stitches. I'm working on my stitch alongs. I'm working on all of these different projects, and I decided that Sunday was going to be my spin the wheel day. What did we call it? Sunday Rain. sleeper. That's what she calls it. I, I call it, it. I call it the Sunday sleeper. And I call it a random spin Sunday. Random spin, spin Sunday. Sunday. I call it Sunday sleeper because it highlights projects you probably forgot and you're, or you really don't want to work on. And they're <laughs> sleeping. And they're sleeping. So Sunday sleepers. So I decided on Sunday we were going to give the wheel a spin. And what do you <laughs> think comes up? The one project she never wants to work on. I don't like this project. I didn't want to work on this project, but you know what? And I worked on if it. If I don't work on it, it'll never get done. So, this is going to look familiar because Samantha's doing the same design. Yep. This is the sewing machine. 
Yep, yep. that's right. The sewing machine. It's on a 14 count Ada. It's a dimensions kit called sewing machine. And Samantha's working on the same one. And what I was able to do was I filled in the darker pinks that's in this part here. And I started filling in the creamy section up here. Um, and then I kind of put it on hold only because School of Magical Stitches posted homework. And I thought, hmm, I can use this for like American studies or something, some, some oh, muggle, muggle, studies. muggle studies. I can use the sewing machine, put a couple hundred stitches in that and use that as homework. So For this week. For this week. So it got me th some stitches done. And I thought I was fitting I've, how come I've made progress mind. and how we ended up with this is my sister gifted me the pattern but gifted me two. So she thinks one for her and one for us, but I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know about that. It might be a while. But anyways, it's just here it is. Samantha, you want to show yours? There you go. So there's Samantha's. Yeah. Hmm. Who do you think's doing more on this project? <laughs> <laughs> well, so. I did a thousand stitches on something I wanted to quit, and I've wanted to quit this thing for a long time. I don't know what it is. People say it's like, oh, it should be easy because it's the same pattern over and over again. I'm going to hold I just, this up closer so you can see it. It's like pe you, people say you should like it because it's the same pattern over and over again. It's like, I don't like that. I, oh, my goodness. I just, oh, I do <laughs> not like it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um. I okay. finished the whole pink section. That was that, that was, was my whip. You might as well keep going with yours then. I finished all the pink section. I had the sewing machine done, except for like this little spindle thing, but it's not up there yet. There's that. Um, another one on there. Yeah, that's a starter. Oh, okay. I want to get to my whips first before I start okay. working on other stuff. Here's my 24-hour cross stitch progress. Uh, I did that whole little these little rows down there. Down this way. Uh, so Samantha doesn't do the, the diagonal method like I do. Yeah. She uses a method called um, snaking from Boss Daughter. Boss, uh, part of, part yeah. of Handwork Maniacs, her daughter did a tutorial on snaking. And what it is is you come down, you come across, work up, go across, work down, cross. And while up. you're going in the blocks, you're going like yeah. in an S shape. So you're doing, you're snaking up and down. Yeah. So. Not bad for a 16-year-old, huh, guys? Yeah. And we'll put a picture of what it will look like finished here. Yeah. And um, that's the bottom of the page all the way down there. And uh, that's the edge of the leaf. Like, that's... After this, it's going to be a whole lot of, like, blackish blue and green until, like, right there. And then there's, like, sky or something. So... She's really excited. She really likes doing that haid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't oh. bore her. Yeah, no, it doesn't bore me. And the the leaf is actually kind of nice because I really didn't like the sky and like whatever this this thing is. I think it's a, I think that's a leaf. Not sure. I was it's just a like, leaf. I wasn't sure. And plus, there's like red, like there's like five colors in there of just one stitch that don't make sense, like purple and orange. I don't know. Doesn't make sense. I also. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was something. I also. Have a new start. Ooh, ah. Uh, oh my goodness. What is that? It's a tree. Oh, here. It's an apple tree. Um, I'm making it for my science teacher from like ninth grade, even though I haven't had her for like two years, but that's beside the point. And we'll insert a picture here of what it's to look like. It was a free pattern that she picked up when we were at StitchCon. Or like keepsake. Or I don't I think it was keepsake. Was it keepsake? It was, in I don't know. Free, it was a free, free pa pattern in so. Yeah. And like okay. the original tree, it had flowers on it, but I, I'm like, mm, I didn't like it, so I made I'm making homemade apples on my apple tree. And what's it say on the bottom? Um, it says, "Help save our environment, plant a tree." So, and and we're thinking she may finish it into a. I got. I'm, I'm thinking about finishing it and putting it like on like a pen holder or something, because teachers always have like something to put on her desk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's all of our whips. Let's talk about FFO. We don't have any finished objects, but we have some FFOs. F -F so um, let's start off with I did roll 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 Robert. Robert. 
They had the spider um, web. You've seen me post the spider web. I made, We it, worked on a Panera bread. Mm -hmm. We worked on a Panera bread. Um, so there it is. And it's made into a nice little pin cushion. It has a wooden base. And the moon, I did like a, a glow in the dark thread for the moon. Um, and we have a spider here. And there's a little metal, that. a that's, spider. That's like spooky. It came with the um, ghost the pin. ghost pin. My sister, a long time ago, made me these like little pins, so I went ahead and put those in there. The little candy, there's a little candy corn candy. pin. Um, she was very inventive, made me some pins, so I, I put that in there. Like and I've actually already started using it when I was back in my, I call it my finishing station now, because I don't know what else to call it. Yeah. Let me tell you, I don't like to FFO anything, but it makes a big difference if you have a designated area that you're able to store things that you would FFO with yeah. because I think part of the problem and part of the hindrance is you get, um, you have to pull everything out, then you have to put it, do whatever you're going to do with it and then put everything back and it just makes it painful. Um, so I did, I took a spare bedroom from one of my daughters that no longer lives here. It was my old, old little kid bedroom. And yeah, it's not big. And I set up a table. And I covered it, and I put my cutting mat on it. And matter of fact, I'll just have let Samantha. It's not pretty, but Samantha can insert a picture right here. Yeah, and make it a lot easier to explain. And it's just simple as that. It is a table, a light, scissors, pins, um, some, some simple thread. stuff, threads, some some ribbons, just something simple. Um, and I have to say, I enjoyed finishing a lot more having things there. Than I did trying to dig stuff out, and I actually enjoyed it. And I finished this last night. So, did you? I, I thought yeah. it was the night before. Was it? Oh, you're right. It we was finished, Sunday night. Yeah, we finished Sunday other night. stuff yesterday. I also finished this needle minder, and it is a little kitty, and it's hand stitched. Don't there is a out. there's a mag. Mm -hmm. No, it works. There's a magnet inside. Whew. There's a magnet inside of the back, and there's for my needle minder so you can use it as a needle minder oh wait a minute that's too heavy needle minder put your needle on there you can poke it if you want to mm. it's not going to hurt anything but i thought how cute is that and that's from rivera same pattern and then i did a scissor fob and i made this a very long scissor <laughs> fob i don't know what i was doing i had some leftover of this that came in that kit from the class and i just i don't know what this is it's like a chenille pom-poms pom -pom thing so i stitched it in the top i put a it's the witch's hat stuffed it with some stuffing and just sewed it closed up here it's rough but you know what it's for me i'm not giving it away so you know and it was my first time doing anything finished that wasn't framed in something and i wasn't very good at that either so I think it turned out well. I'm happy to have it, and I'm going to utilize it for sure. And I may stitch this. I mean, these were pretty easy stitches, so I may use that pattern again and stitch this up again. So I think it, it turned out nice. Um, we have another FFO. We got two FFOs. We got two FFOs. Before we do this, okay. <laughs> if your name is Sherry or Cindy, and I'm going to see you, we're going to see you this weekend, do not watch this part of this video. Please don't. Please don't watch this part of this video because this is a gift for you and we want you to be surprised. So we're going to give you time now to turn off your video. Or at least like skip ahead or something. Skip ahead. Don't look. Just don't look. Don't you look. Can watch, you can watch your... Watch anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Go watch the sixth video. <laughs> you know, and watch this later. Um, so, do you think that they left yet? Probably not. They're too but, snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you're my sister Sherry or my friend Cindy, and you know who you are, you should have left. And if you didn't leave, shame on you, because it's your fault. And so, if you're somebody who's going to tell them, leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, S Samantha and I have made a project. We cross-stitched, finished cross-stitching it. It was a Dimensions kit called Enjoy the Ride. Um, one of our earlier cross-stitch projects. And we're going to show you simultaneously. Hopefully you enjoy what you're seeing. But here you go. This is one I did for my sister. She likes blue. And it's got a little hanger to hang it. Dial in rod. In the back with a dial. They can put a dial rod in here and hang it if they want to hang it on the door. 
And Samantha has hers. Mine's for Cindy. Her favorite color is purple. Her favorite color is purple. So I know. made a purple bike, and I and I she dated it and put her initials on it. Yeah, I didn't. That's how you know who you know. I didn't date baby. mine or and initial I actually, it. I worked on but. this on the last twenty four hours mm -hmm. thing, and Aunt Sherry was there. I think. So that's our FFO. We are planning um, a retreat this weekend with them, and it's kind of like my sister's survive the summer in the wedding and uh, her relaxation weekend. We're going to get the, together with them. They are quilters, um, so we're going to get together with them, and we're going to take this and give it to them as, our, as a gift. So, as our smalls exchange. Hmm. Maybe it's not that small. It's our, it's our like medium it. exchange. So, that was our FFO. Okay. That's the end of that. That's the end of that. So, um, okay, let's see. I tried gritting with a, with um, needle and thread with and salty linen and something. with sulky thread. I was not a fan. It but seemed like did, it took a long time. But to you do. did do like the whole thing. I did in, in a couple goes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to swear it off yet. I just I'm not sure if that's for me. I think I need to count better. So, on to stitchy kindness. Stitchy kindness. So, first things first. Um, my sister met me. She comes in for infusions, and she met me, and she, I had asked her a while ago to keep her eye open for trivets um, for, that I can use for finishing. So, she showed up. We got a box of stuff. We got a box. Of, it's actually a box of antique glass with frogs um, to hold your scissors and whatnot with. Uh, oh, there you go, Samantha. You can show yours. So, mine's a teacup. I'll hold it. I don't know that. There you go. So the hers is a teacup with a frog on in the inside. There um, we go. That she can hold her her stuff in, and she leaves that next to her little stitchy spot. Um. Anyway. Anyway, she also brought me this trivet that I can do a finish on it. It's just a square square trivet that I can do a finish. I don't know what finish I'm going to do yet, but I have it. And the other thing she brought me, which I thought was really neat, was this trivet. And it looks like a teapot. And Samantha and I checked. Um, this actually comes out. And so we're going to use this as a finish. And we're going to put her tea time, if you can see, in there. inside the teapot. She's going to have tea time and we're going to finish it off when she gets that stitched. And we're going to make that in her teapot. So that's the plan for that. So I thought that was pretty, pretty inventive. So thank you, Sherry, for that. Um, we also, do you have any stitchy kindness thing? Okay. So um, I was the winner okay. of Mama Metzger's giveaway. You got stitchy kindness. I got that. Oh, that's right. I was uh, part of Mama Metzger's uh, giveaway winner that she showed. Her bag in it has got Jack and, Jack and it's from um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, I forget what the girl's name is. Oh, I can remember it. If I wasn't trying to think of it, I'd remember it now. But anyways, I was her winner and I received this in the mail the day after we taped last time. So oh, yeah. Yeah. I got that and inside I got a new pattern that's got turtles and it's got some different stitches that I haven't tried before. These are Quaker turtles. Um, I think it's adorable. By With My Needle and it's something I have not done before but I'm really excited to give it a try. A needle book, there's a pin cushion, uh, just, I'm, it's, it looks like it's going to be really neat. So that would be that. <laughs> And I really, I mean, the bag is really nice, and I, you know, I like giving, so I, and I also like being the winner of a giveaway. It's exciting, so, um, so I was really excited to give away our giveaway. So yeah. it's 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 in my nature. I can't help myself. I just I would probably give away. I'm taking taking some embroidery to work tomorrow. I didn't tell tell you this. No, you didn't. I have a, a hang, and, and we'll insert a picture here. My sister had um, saved the stitches from an antique shop. It says, Home is Where the Heart Is, and she quilted it for me, and I have it hanging on my door at work. And a lady in our billing department was walking by, and she stopped, and she was looking at the stitches, and 
she asked me, she goes, did you stitch this? And I said, oh, no, that was, you know, told the story. My sister got it at an at a antique shop and made it into a door hanging for me. And she says, oh, and I said, why do you stitch? And she says, well, yes, I've done one like that, um, but I do this the stamped stitching. And I said, oh, that's how a lot of people start. My grandmother, that's what she always that's what did. I did. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have lots of that at home. I just, I've been doing counted, so I really don't do that form anymore. And so I'm going to take her in some of the things that I have and share my stash. And I told her, feel free to look through it. Anything she didn't want, I would just take back. Maybe somebody else would be interested in it. Maybe I'll throw it in as a giveaway. Um, but yeah, she, it was exciting to see that somebody else that works where I work finally knows what I'm doing and understands <laughs> it. That doesn't happen. So I was really excited about that. So anyway, sorry. I went on a tangent. Okay. Okay. Yes, you Should have I some. open this? No. Or I just leave it? No, I wouldn't open it. You just did your kindness. But. I got this owl. Here, let me see if I can. There we go. I got an owl. It's from Daphne. It came on Metzger. Uh, she said she got it because it looked like Hedwig from Harry Potter and she just had to get it for me, which I think it's adorable. Thank you, Daphne. Uh -huh. And it is a Mill Hill Winter Holiday Collection Snowy Owlet. I think it's cute. The beads are tiny. Everything. I got that to look forward to. <laughs> yep. We'll have fun with that. I'll work on that at some point. So, <laughs> thank you, um, everyone. Daphne. Daphne. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you very much. Um, we do have some haul. Uh, one of the first things I want to show you, we're going to show you together. We got our Garon Project uh, Mill Happy Birthday. You're really thinking about Mill Hill. <laughs> I am. I got Mill Hill in my brain. Um, but it's got Happy Birthday on the inside of it. This was part of his St. Jude's fundraiser. He was selling bags. I purchased three. Um, I gave one to Samantha. But, I, of course, I don't get it acknowledged for stitchy kindness. But I did give one to Samantha. Thank I kept you, one. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I kept one for myself. And I have one set aside for a future giveaway. So, at some point, somebody's going to have the opportunity at one of these bags. Because I tucked it away for a giveaway. Now, i got to tell you. I am, I am a big proponent of Gayron Toten Bags. If you don't know about them, you need to look on Facebook. That's where they do their sales. They have a, a group there. They post albums. Ask questions. They are happy to help you. Um, Gary is part of the Sunshine Stitchers. And his spouse, Ronnie... Ronnie does all the sewing on the bags, and, and he says Ronnie is the, the man of the show for these bags, and he is truly talented. Um, and I've sang their praises many videos. I found another use <laughs> for these smaller bags. Guess you, what fits? What do you do to it? <laughs> what, guess what fits in here perfectly? And this is going with me to my retreat this weekend. But guess what fits in here perfectly? I have my pink flamingo. From Mill Hill Kit. That is in here. I have my Autumn Harvest. Oh my goodness. How many Mill Hills are in there? I just want to know. Those two. And I have my little Tacky Bob. All of that is in this one little pouch. It is the perfect size. It's got everything in it. And it fits in there. Look. And this will be my Mill Hill Kit bag. Thank you, Ronnie, very much. But this will be my Mill Hill kit bag, and it will be going with me to retreat. And I know what's in here is for little, little projects with little, little fragile hands. Little projects. I, yep, so <laughs> with little hands. So that was a haul. My other haul item is Under the Sea Fabrics has a new, um, I don't know that this is from her. I ordered it from Under the Sea Fabrics with Leslie. 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 I cannot say her last She's name. She's Leslie. You all know her. We all you know her. Leslie from Under the Sea Fabrics. If you don't, you like should. Leslie um, but here is the design. It's Pearl of the Orient Seas. If you have not seen this, it is by Aldrin J. Perilla. It is. If you I, And I did not take it out of the plastic because I just didn't. <laughs> it's still sealed. You can see. Um, but this is Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, Pearl, Pearl of the Orient, right? Or Pearl, Pearl of, of the, the Orient, Orient Seas. I got the pattern. I got the 
Cranic that goes with it. It is a specialty sparkly. thread pack. It's very sparkly. I got the bead pack, embellishment pack. <laughs> See what you did, Daphne? Not only was I like, oh, I'll figure it out with these Mill Hill kits, I go and jump into this. Oh. Um, so it's got the bead pack, and I have the fabric. It is under the sea fabrics. This one is Lugana. It's an opalescent called Bridget. And look at that. Can you see how beautiful is that fabric? That is where my mermaid is going to go. My pearl will under. It like is very sparkly. Down well, I could do it down here. I can flip it this way. Just, it's beautiful. And I don't know if you can see the shimmer. We are kind of don't have really good lighting. But that's pretty true to color. But you're missing the shimmer, I think. At least it looks like. So, oh. I, it's not going to be a start anytime soon. Because wait till you see what I'm starting. But, what are you starting? Well, um, we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. but, um, it is a project that is kitted up, in my opinion. Other than the, I need to get the floss for it. But it is definitely ready to go. Um, and I have, and a lot of you probably already seen, the Just Cross Stitch magazine. Um, I am torn. I have a subscription to this magazine. There are some things that Samantha Samantha I really love, liked. I love this that. pattern, the I Woodland just, Friends. I love all of them, but like the Fox is my favorite. And I've told her any of my magazines, she's welcome to anything she wants to stitch. Make a copy of it so that she can work off the copy and she can stitch it. But yeah, she. I'm not a big proponent of back stitching. I know it makes things pop, and I know people love it. I don't love it. Um, I think I find that back stitching is very tedious. So if I can find a pattern that doesn't require back stitching, I'm going to gravitate towards that one, at least right now, um, yeah. because that seems to be what I like. All the things that are back stitched, and I like how they pop, but um, so I just hard. don't want to be the one to do it. Um, so. Look at this again. <laughs> well, you can look at it after the video. I know, but I want to see so, I have that next. All right, Paul, Samantha, do you have any haul? No. Okay. All right. So then, let's talk plans because what's your plan, Sam? Oh, wait, no, I want to show this. Oh, you like that one? I do like this one. I just thought that was really cute. Let's see if I can get it better. I can kind of hold it up closer. Here you go. I just thought it was nice. Like and that's I, a fall teapot. You would like the teapot, being that you like tea. Well, it's just like, the colors are just so pretty. I mean, that pumpkin looks like a lot Look of Look at that confetti in the middle of those sunflowers. But I mean, if it looks like that whenever it's done, it's worth it, right? Like, not well, then make a copy and stitch it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, enough about that. That's just all I wanted to look at. Okay, any haul? No. No. Okay, so upcoming plans. Okay, so let's talk about upcoming plans. We are going to retreat this week. Yes, this week. This it's Thursday. an informal quilt retreat. We're going to be the only cross stitchers at a quilt retreat. Okay, so our mission is, but we're going to we're going to convert. We're going to convert. <laughs> convert. We're going to convert quilters that are in our group to cross stitch. Okay, I don't think that's going to work out for Aunt Cherry. She's just like, <laughs> we're Cindy might try. Like, mm. Okay, so. We have that coming this weekend, and really, honestly, it's a it's a girls' weekend. It's a relaxation. It's weekend. a girls' weekend. We're going to a place called the Hemmed Inn. It's in Indiana, Pennsylvania. It's the um, renovated church that we were talking about. Last yeah, it's episode. a it's a it's a church. Um, previously in its previous life, it's renovated now. Actually, they kept the old Bell. um benches, the oh. the church um seating the the wooden benches and they're actually headboards on the beds yeah. um there's four to four beds in a room there's two rooms there's a open kitchen and project tables galore if you're looking for a small group i think up to eight um but if and you're you can looking, also you can also ring the bell because they left the bell in there but you can only ring it like noon there's a there is a bell from the church and the local it's it's very country um, you, there's not much cell signal service. There is not a television there. There is an old radio. As a matter of fact, I've already gotten the text message that said, can you please bring your husband's radio so we can listen to music? Um, there's, there's not service for anything. Yeah. So, 
Um, nice and relaxing, perfect reason for a getaway. There is a bell that you pull the cord at noon, and, and that is because it was a family-owned property, a lot of farm town around it, um, and they were all excited. There's a long story about it, but all excited that the bell was restored so that any time that they have retreaters or staying there, they ask them if they would ring the bell 12 times at noon because the local community really enjoy hearing the church bells ring again. So, we tend to make sure everybody takes their turn to doing that. We're usually um, a little bit late. <laughs> we, we are going to try, we are going to try and do some vlog type, vid, vlog type videoing while we're there because we are leaving, we will be packing tomorrow night. This is Tuesday, by the way. <laughs> we'll get better at putting this in the beginning. August 13th. Tuesday. Um, we're going to be packing up tomorrow when I get home from work so that Thursday when I get home from work we are leaving Thursday night um, and we will be there until Sunday. And I've already forewarned them that you know what? You may be on my next video so make sure you do your hair. <laughs> um, so that's coming up next this coming weekend so we're looking forward to that. Um, in October, October 25th, 26th, and 27th there is another retreat happening in Ohio, and it's also a very informal retreat. It's not the big, like, stitch con bells and whistles or um, some of the other big retreats. It's not like that PJs. at all. <laughs> this is a um, smaller group. I think they typically have 12, 12 to 15 people attend. Um, what they, the, the organizer, Debbie Lowry, I believe is her name, is... Um, the, the organizer for this, and she reserved a room at the hotel, and it's near Boardman, Ohio. Um, reserved a room at, reserved, reserved a meeting room at the hotel, and so you can go stay at the hotel. There's a pool at the hotel, um, and we go to this meeting room, and that's where we stitch at. And you can stitch all day, and we were there into the night. last We went last year and had a really good time, met some new stitchers. Um, it is in, in our, uh, Stitchers Escape group on Facebook. Also, if you look for the Facebook group, Western Pennsylvania and Ohio Stitching Group. Um, and it's and so it basically turns out to whatever your hotel is, and I think last year it wasn't but 68 or maybe $70 a night. It's not expensive. Um, and the uh, retreat itself, I think we split the room up between the full group of us, and I think we spent $30 for it. So not that bad. That is not expensive, and if you're looking for a weekend out, it starts Friday um, evening after work hours, typically late Friday, um, all day Saturday, and then Sunday, usually Sunday morning, I think, is whenever everybody's out of the meeting room. So it was a good time last year, so we're looking forward to going this year. Like I said, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but if you're just looking to sit and stitch and meet, make some acquaintances of people in the area, that's a good opportunity to do that. I'm actually considering um, potentially doing something like that in my area um, just to get more people involved. And so I'm going to be looking at um, some of that, how to do that. Um, plans. So that's talking about those things. So, Samantha, do you have plans? I got a Hogwarts homework for this week planned. All right, tell us what your Hogwarts homework for this week planned is quickly. Okay, okay. okay. So I'm going to hopefully try and finish this this week. Don't know if I will, but I mean, I can attempt. Uh, I need to finish the teacup and write tea in time. That's that for like potions class or something this week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put a picture in there anyway, but I got, I got this all strung out by, it's a stitch studio kit or something. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and tie a story together. Like, the cats were trying to, like, connect constellations or something with the yarn, and it kind of fell apart for astronomy. Hopefully it works. If not, I won't cry. I'm start- I got two new starts this week. Look out, Samantha's starting. I got starts. And I can't believe Mary Poppins hasn't made the start list yet. It didn't fit in my homework this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got my, my- I got my Quaker Crow. And this is the one she's doing in the per the uh, the gray thread fabric and the Bing Cherry Bing gloss. Cherry gloss. Um, so. I was planning on using this for the charms homework because I could say like somebody controlled the bird to like send a message or something. You know. 
Well, you could choose that pattern for in charms, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then I have Ice Castle, which I got that at that by that needle in hand. She got this last year. Did I? Last year. You got this. I got it. Oh, yeah, I did. When we I... went, it, yeah, Needle in Hand in Ohio, and, yeah. and we got this last year when we were there for the retreat that we were just yeah. talking about. At the hotel retreat. There's a there's a, the local, um, that retreat we were talking about in Ohio, in Boardman, Ohio, they have a Needle in Hand um, shop. It's a needle workshop, cross-stitch, um, and this was one of got their the patterns, patterns and, oh, yeah. I got the fabric that's supposed to go with. It is a 32 count Belfast called Lilac. So there, there you go. That's how big it's supposed to be. That's how big it'll be. And this is the design. Yeah. I think it'll turn out nice. So I, those are my stars. It's called that's Ice it. Castle. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe if I feel lucky, I might use this for the ultimate credit by like Do you have your floss house. for that together? Pretty sure. I have my floss together. It's just, I don't have it with me right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Do you have any plans? I have plans, and I'm going to share with you my plans. So, I am going to do, I'm really looking forward to this, and this has to do with homework, has to do with, it's been hanging up here behind me. I have projects up here, if you can see. The Hello Halloween. Um, I got Hello Halloween, look, fabric in there, scared cat. Scary. I think I got a, a Glendon Place, I mean. We got patterns back here. We have patterns back here of things as I was putting, I know I'm awful, but as I was putting patterns away, and I still have a stack from StitchCon that I have not completely put away, but as I was putting patterns away, these were like calling, hey, remember me? And then I was going through fabric going, oh, I think that would go perfectly with this one. So anyways, long story short, this one went out because I think it's going to be an easy start, and, it's, and it says... Um, it is called Stir with the Big Girls, and it's a waxing moon designs, and it says, if you can't stir with the big girls, stay away from the cauldron, and I love that. I think so, you saw it at Keepsakes. I saw it at Keepsakes. I bought it at Keepsakes. <laughs> I absolutely Got love it. I saw it, it, and I said, this screams to my sister. Got to get it, and I have lime green fabric. From keepsakes. From keepsakes. So you can see, oh, that's kind of washing out a little bit. Let me. See. I, I think it's washing out. With it's kind of like a pistachio color. Yeah, like it's, pistachio. No, it's it's a lime lime green, and it's 32 count fiber on a whim, and I am going to do this design instead of on the orange. I'm going to do it on green. So with black thread. Yeah. So. Black I think it's, I, I'm, I'm excited about that. I am definitely going to be starting that. I think that's going to be a fairly easy stitch. It's one She color. can work on it tonight. If she and I to. can use that for potions. I can use that for, there's actually two or three homework assignments that I kind of figured that would work for. So I'm going with it. You could probably use it for muggle studies to like cooking or whatever. Oh, I don't know. But on Thursday is August 15th. So guess what happens on August 15th? If you haven't already gotten in on I it, get mine out. you should you should get it get it going. August fifteenth starts Autumn Quakers. Look at Samantha's running. Autumn Quaker. Uh -oh. um, oops, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the Rosewood Manor Sal, um, started by Gary with Stitch in Sunshine Stitchers, and most people are doing Autumn Quaker. This is Autumn Quaker. Um, this is the pattern. I will be doing Autumn Quaker. I am doing it with the Valdani, Valdani threads. Words? Well, my <laughs> words. The Valdani threads. So these are the thread kit that came with that. I am going to do it on those. And we have um, du Dublin, Dublooned, Dublooned. Dublooned. Picture this plus Dublooned fabric. This is a 28 count Lugana. Um, so hopefully you can see the variegation in this, I don't know if that's really true to color. It's almost like a cappuccino-y kind of looking color, like a light cappuccino roasted marshmallow looking. Anyways, um, it's kind of, our lights really went to crap, so. Yeah, it's kind of rainy outside, so it's all cloudy. Yeah. I am doing this on, with my Q-Snap, and my Q-Snap is loaded. It's not loaded. Ha! 
but my Q-Snap is in here. There you are, Minnie. Um, my Q-Snap is in the bag, and my bag, my Gayron bag, with the autumn birds, and <laughs> I guess Poppy's coming to visit with us. Yeah, he was whining. So, this is Poppy. He's my baby. That's him. our little buddy who gets lonely. He he has, he has a lot of... bad separation anxiety. Oh, bad separation anxiety. Um, the other thing I'm using for the, the Autumn Quaker is I pulled out my Bitsy Bop. If, I don't know if anybody has seen these. Um, I will put a link below, but it snaps. It's made by That's So Kelly. There's a little magnet in here, put right here, that on. you can put your needle miner, you can put your scissors in there. It holds any loose threads, and it's the perfect size that this will fit into the zip, zipper pouch on the side, and I can put it together and have everything together. So um, this is a pattern that, I don't know, I picked out for whatever whatever reason. It must have called to me at the time, and I had it here. Um, so I will be using this to kind of keep track of this Valdani floss because I don't know how that's going to come off the spool, but... We're going to give it a whirl and give it a try. So if you want more information on that, um, there's no rules. Um, it starts on Thursday. Uh, like I said, Gary is known for being a quick stitcher, and part of his um, agreement with everybody is that he will only stitch on it one day a week until January to give the rest of us a chance. And then come January, he's plowing through. No hold barred after January. Yeah. So... I will definitely be working on this and getting this going on Thursday. I'm really excited to get going on it. Um, it, it can be any Rosewood Manor. It doesn't have to be Autumn Quaker. So Samantha is going to be working on... On my parchment tapestry. Um, that's where I'm at so far. Uh, I think there's like another flower and a half or something on that part before I have to move it. But I think I'm just going to try and get the borders done for the majority. Okay. And... Uh, Taking so, that to our retreat this weekend to work on probably. So that we can post pictures. So when you're, as you're making progress, um, I know that there was a young lady that, I'm assuming it was a young lady, I guess I shouldn't assume, um, that said that she saw us talking about this sow, um, and so she wanted in and ordered everything, and I'm so glad that she jumped on board, because it's fun. Uh, sow is a stitch along. Yes. Um, so if you do a hashtag Rosewood Manor, you're going to see what other people are working on. Um, and there's no rules, there's no end date. It's work at your own pace. Share it as long as you're working on it. Um, share your progress. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So, and hopefully it doesn't become a stitch alone because I'm always willing to stitch. And now that you have virtual stitchers, there's no reason to stitch alone. <laughs> oh, huh. hmm. imagine all, that. It all loops together. It all loops together. Okay. Are there any other plans? I think that that was a lot of plans. We there went we over a lot. There's a lot of projects going with us. School of Magical Stitches. Somebody asked me about homework in the, in the, in the comments and what that was. She hears a lot of floss tubers talking about homework. Um, there's a couple of groups out there, and mostly they're challenges. Um, right now, I'm involved with the School of Magical Stitches homework. Um, and so every week there's a new assignment and that falls along with the Harry Potter theme. It's, it follows that genre of books and it follows with Harry Potter. Last year was something completely different. I'm assuming in January it's going to be something different, not just Harry Potter. They'll do something different. Vicky says that she already knows what she's going to do, but she's not going to tell anybody. She's not telling anybody? Yeah, she's not telling anybody. So um, in this one, we, we're reading books, and each your, your assignment correlates with the homework. So we're in our fifth year, the seventh week, and they're working on their OWL exam. So, yeah, that's um, why there's a lot of homework. That's why there's a lot of homework. Like 200 stitches on each of these different projects that falls in line with astrology and muggle studies and all kinds of stuff. If you're a part of the School of Magical Stitches, you, you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. The, the nice thing about that group is it's so interesting to see the stories people come up with to make their projects work. Sometimes there's projects I really want to work on. I post a picture to my group. I'm, we're Hufflepuffs. Yeah. Um, don't. Yeah, we're Hufflepuffs. I'm Hufflepuff. We post it to the group and say, hey, how can I make this work for this challenge? And, and well, people will give Kathy. you some stories. <laughs> um, so uh, there's another group that follows along with Game of... No, not Game of Thrones. What is it? They, I don't know what the name of the group is. I know Tranquil Stitches is part of that group. Um, and I think that they go over... Um, the Hobbit. What's the Hobbit? Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. I think they do Lord of the Rings on that one, and they kind of. I hear her talking about following a map and where she's at in her quest, 
because all of her stitches count for so many steps in the, the, the voyage that they're on um, in oh. search of the, the ring. So there's a lot of challenges out there. Um, I encourage everybody to just find, find a group that works for you, um, has the challenges you like to do. Maybe you like to do this one, but you don't want to do other things. That's fine. As long as it gets you stitching. And, you know, we've said before, stitching doesn't have to be a solo event. There's lots of opportunity and avenues out there, and I'm learning more all the time. Um, I know Steel City Stitchers is doing a group. Is it, It's this weekend. It's this yeah. weekend. Yeah, because Samantha and I wanted to go. It's at the Mad Hatter's Tea or someplace in Sewickley. Like I don't know. It's a tea place. It's a tea. Um, in Sewickley, they were going to do like an afternoon stitch in um, like there three for hours. Yeah, three hours. And we were going to go. We wanted to go, but it conflicted with this family weekend. event that we're doing with the retreat in Indiana. So we can't, we couldn't go. So that's all right. Um, but maybe next time. Um, so I think. We really gave you a lot of information. We weren't really planning on this being a very long video, so I apologize. Yeah. It's just going to be um, a short update video. For it was going to be a short update video, so I am anticipating next week's to be quicker. Um, but we appreciate you stopping by. We appreciate you visiting with us. We appreciate all the comments. Um, we're probably going to be off the circuit here for about four days, but please still leave comments. We will get back to you as soon as we have service. Um, we're going to try and take some vlog style videos while we're gone so we can show what the quilters we're working on in our group and and um, sharing the fun with you. Um, hopefully you can see what we've been doing and what we've been up to. Um, if you haven't commented on last week's video, do it. Yes, don't forget last week we had our we giveaway. Our giveaway. Um, go back, watch episode 6. Make sure that you leave a comment, and, and if you're not sure how to leave a comment, ask somebody, <laughs> they'll tell you. Um, and you. If you're watching us on the television, there's not a place to leave a comment. You need to have us on your handheld device, or a laptop, or iPads, or your phones, so that you can get that box that's below our video that has all these different little things on it, but one of them will say comment. If you don't have that and you scroll all the way down under all the videos that are beneath us, you will see a comment section. But if you're like us, we have it on our television and we don't always leave comments. We have to find us on the phone. So take the time, look for us on your phone um, so that you can tell us more about you. And what's gonna be our question? Of the day. Question of the day. What was your favorite class in school? Subject. Class yeah. subject. Class subject. What was your favorite class subject in school? And you can't say like recess or lunch. No, we're talking subjects like learn. How about learning educational opportunities? That's loud. <laughs> I was going to say that's loud, but I meant Or how about that. your favorite class subject? That's what I said first. Your favorite class subject. Yeah. So leave a description. Leave it in the description. Oh my goodness. Leave it in the description. Leave it in the no, comment. That's what, that's what yeah, I know, about. right? Leave it in the comment box below. What is your favorite subject when in you were school. in school? Because guess who starts school next week? Yay! Yay! I think it's Wednesday. Yep. She's really excited. Can you tell? I'm excited to see my friends, and that's about it. Not excited to have like last lunch period where I'm starving all day. Yep. So, all right, everyone. It was great visiting with you. Don't forget to leave a comment. Tell us how your day's going. Tell us what your favorite subject was. I'm sure Samantha would love to hear more about yeah, school. I have been commenting more often. So. She has been commenting more often, so hopefully you're seeing comments from Sam. Yeah. Um, and, again, we want to thank you for joining us. And if you're new, I hope you'll come back and visit us on our next video. Don't forget to, to, to go back. To watch episode six and leave a response to our giveaway question. Yes. And like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. <laughs>